everybody, I'm James Kotecki, Head of Communications at Automated Insights. Welcome to Inside Wordsmith, the video series that takes you inside Wordsmith. I'm here with our CEO, Robbie Allen, and this is the very first episode. And Robbie, welcome to the show. Thanks, James. I look forward to it. So on Tuesday, we released Wordsmith Beta into the world. What is Wordsmith Beta? Uh, well, it's uh, probably one of the most exciting developments in the company's history. What Wordsmith is, is essentially a platform that enables data-driven writing. Um, and one of the key differences between what we released on Tuesday and what we've done in the past is now this is something that will be accessible to everyone instead of just the folks inside of Automated Insights. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Robbie Allen, um, that is actually his excited voice and his excited expression. <laughs> So, Robbie, tell me about like the origin story of Wordsmith Beta, and I guess we have to take it back to the origin of the company. Well, initially, we uh, or I took sports data and created all sorts of interesting visualizations, and um, you know, created new metrics on top of existing sports data to provide a different view into the best players and teams, and and you know, different facets of sports that I covered. Okay, so where does the automated magical robot writing stuff come in? Yeah, so it wasn't too far into it that I realized if I was really going to create a venture around data, and specifically sports data to start, that I needed to be able to generate content. I needed to be able to generate articles that described that data in interesting ways. But I didn't want to have to go out and hire a lot of writers to do it because what's the fun of that? Um, and I thought for certain types of analytical writing, uh, you should be able to automate it because you can create formulas and algorithms that would essentially uh, replicate what a human does when they go through the process of analyzing data and writing about it. Okay, so you build a company that is initially called StatSheet that's doing this for sports. Then you eventually build that into Automated Insights, which is doing this for financial services and quantified self and healthcare and uh, marketing and a number of other areas. But at some point, uh, you decide to take uh, what is effectively a, a very awesome a service for companies of automating their data into narratives and turn it into basically a software product. So when does that decision happen? I, well, we've been thinking about it, or I've been thinking about it for several years. We've always had a lot of interest in the platform. So we initially launched with doing fantasy football uh, stories for Yahoo. Uh, we also did real estate stories very early on back in around 2011 or so. And uh, you know, as people became more aware of the technology, we'd get more requests for folks to want to use it themselves. Um, but based on how we'd created it, it was a very sort of power user, um, you know, data-oriented view that required a fair amount of expertise. And it really took us several years of working with lots of uh, big and small clients and publishing billions of pieces of content before we really could create a platform that we thought could encapsulate the process of creating data-driven writing written stories right. in a way that uh, you know general consumers could use. But can you take me through the process because I know it went through several iterations of like how complicated should it be, how hard should it be to use compared to how much you can actually do with the tool. So what were some of the decision points behind how hard to make it? So originally we were going to launch or release a tool that is you know provided all the capabilities that we use internally. Um, but as we started working on that and we get feedback from clients, we learned that that was going to be too complicated. That uh, everything that goes into enabling you to generate millions of stories a week like what we do for Yahoo requires a certain sophistication in terms of the feature set that made it um, you know, less easy for people to really understand and use. And so um, you know, after several iterations, we decided to start more simply um, because we thought there was actually a fairly significant market that didn't need all the bells and whistles that we've developed over time, and they actually could, you know, pl benefit plenty from just having a tool that did, um, you know, some of the basics around automating content. Now, for us, what, what we'll do is over time we'll be adding in more capabilities, um, you know, as we get more feedback and as we um, continue to refine the tool and make it easy for people to use. The goal is to always make it as easy as possible mm -hmm. and never yeah, burden the user by presenting a lot of features and functionalities that, while maybe really cool, um, the vast majority of them won't use. It seems like the easier thing in some ways to do is to make it harder. And the harder thing to do mm -hmm. is to figure out a way to simplify it in a way that everybody can actually use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's almost a truism now in product development that uh, it's harder to create a more s a simple product. 
you know, and Apple's kind of become known for that. Um, and it's absolutely true. I mean, you know, again, the process of automating content and creating story structures that can support dozens, hundreds, thousands of outputs, um, that process is complex. And so for us to create a tool around that complex process um, wasn't easy. And it's something that we continue to refine and get feedback on. And again, fortunately, you know, we've had many years of experience doing this and have lots of clients to rely on. Um, but we think we're really onto something. Another thing that people might be curious about who are in your position or in, in the position we were in a couple of years ago where we had or we still have a thriving uh, business where we're doing this on a professional level, but we want to build a product is how do you dedicate resources to building this product? and at the same time keep your business going in other ways? Yes, largely you have two separate functions within the company, one that's working on um, you know, the product and others that are working on the more professional services aspect of what we do. Um, can you talk about some of the ways we brought the whole company involved in kind of uh, creating the product and giving feedback on the product before we unleashed it to the world? Yeah, so one of the things that we've done, we did really early on was have an internal hackathon with the early version of the product and you know, essentially, you know, made it available for everyone to try internally. That's everyone all the way from, you know, sales and marketing to every developer and data scientist. Um, and we kind of let, let them loose for a couple of days to see what they could come back with. And this was, again, at the very early stages. And, you know, it's pretty amazing some of the things that they, they developed. And so we were really encouraged, um, you know, just based on sort of that limited couple of days of, of people trying it out. And so that's kind of a way that we knew that we were onto something by the ability of everybody in the company, regardless of their technical proficiency, to be able to create some cool stuff. Yeah, and you know, a common question I get all the time from journalists is, so what kind of things do you think will be created with WordSmith? And my answer is, I don't actually know. And I don't think there's, there's no way that we can predict, you know, even from the very earliest stages when we thought, you know, some of the main markets might just be sports, finance, and real estate, and then instantly we were getting... Um, you know, bombarded with all sorts of other crazy kind of use cases. I think that's, you know, going to explode even more yeah. now with WordSmith that now it's available in more people's hands. All right. So uh, what are the next uh, two and a half, three months of the beta process look like to you? Well, the reaction we got was more than what we expected. And so part of it will just be kind of handling um, and working through the backlog of all the, the requests that we received. You know, the beta period is a bit of a learning period for us. And so there's a lot of experiments and different things that we're going to be trying out, you know, over the next few months. Uh, that's all leading up to more of a general availability launch that uh, will, you know, happen first of the 2016. And um, a year from now, do you think that WordSmith is going to be uh, significantly more complex, or is it just going to be able to do more complex things, but in a simple way? Leading question, by the way. Yeah, I want it to be way more complex and mm -hmm. more, you know, much more difficult. Uh, no, of course, we, the, in, the intent is it'll be, you know, in fact, it may even look dramatically different than it does today. It's a little hard to say. Again, part of it is, you know, we'll get feedback um, and refine the product as we kind of see what's working and what's not working. But absolutely, there's going to be more of the magic uh, that we'll be building into it. That's, you know, very common for some of our internal implementations. Any other lessons for startups and tech companies that you've taken from this specific beta building process, things that you didn't know before, but now you know after, say, a year of doing this? It, it, well, for us, especially, it's been really difficult just because, again, we're creating a product that doesn't really have any um, any direct corollaries in the market. You know, it's something that it's kind of the first time people have seen it. And I guess the one piece of feedback is if, you know, companies are trying to make the transition from more of a professional services oriented structure to a product structure, it's very difficult, right? It, don't underestimate all of the work that goes into it, all of even just kind of moving the strategy of the company in a new direction takes a lot of effort, uh, both internally, externally. And there's cultural um, differences too, right? Absolutely. Just in the way that people, not that people are not excited by one or the other, but just the way that they approach work or think about how they go about their days. Yeah, you, you pretty much are completely changing the company. So, you know, it's, it's not to be underestimated everything that goes into that. Well, hey, I'm James Kotecki. Join me next time for the next edition of Inside Wordsmith, where I have another exciting guest. Who will it be? You'll have to tune in to find out. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you. I was hopeful that our interview was on fleet. <laughs>